welcome to Pay It Forward. Weather's a bit rainy here today in my area of Oz. So I've got a quick and easy project for you. Very simple to make and here's a lovely green tree frog. You can make them up in any colours you like of course. And of course there's a free pattern. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below, download your free template and I'll show you how it's done. So let me show you the things we'll need to make a little frog today. And the first thing that we're going to need are our top pieces of our frog. These two sections here. And they are both cut from, I'm just using a quilting cotton with visible webbing applied to the back. Now from there, I actually take my paper off. Starting at the bottom of the foot, which is easier. So I remove my backing paper. And then I'm just going to fuse using a hot iron and a protective cloth I'm going to fuse that little piece onto my felt and what that's going to give me I'm going to press that one on what that's going to give me is a piece of felt fabric so it's fabric backed in felt and it's all bonded and secure and it's a nice stable fabric to be working with and it also means that we can leave raw edges we won't have to turn our little frog through. We're going to be able to leave raw edges and they're not going to fray away. So that's the reason why I'm doing that. So I'm just going to take that one and press that one on. Now that I have my, my little pattern piece fused to my felt, you can see then it's quite simple just to trim away the excess felt. And then we get a lovely clean edge. So it's just a matter of cutting that one out right the way around that pattern piece. So now that second one is cut out so they both have that nice felt backing. So the next things that you'll need, we're going to need some eyes for our little frog and I'm using safety eyes here today. You can of course use just ordinary buttons. Um, the safety eyes will be put in before we put them all together and I'm using a 12 millimeter safety eye and I have a little felt eye surround already cut out. Now I've made those out of two pieces of felt bonded together with a little bit of heat and bond so that when we pop that little eye in you can see and it's put in with the safety eye we get that lovely black backing around that really marks out that little eye. It just gives you a little bit more um, definition there which is really lovely. And the next thing we'll need is the base for our frog. So we've got our little base and I have made that fabric up in exactly the same way as I did these except that I've just joined my fabric and my felt together in one big rectangle piece and that's ready to, for us to lay our little frog out and, and stitch him straight on. So just a piece that will accommodate the size of that one is actually the size of an A4 sheet which most of your felt squares you'll find are. You'll also need some uh, embroidery thread or some pearl cotton and I like to use a nice bright red for his little mouth to be stitched in there and a little bit of black also for his little nostrils. We also need to be able to fill him. We need a small amount of polyester filling. It's just a tiny bit that we need. The rest you can fill with, I use just dried rice. Um, you can use, uh, if you're lucky enough to get toy plastic pellet fill, you can, you can use that. Um, I find that the rice or even dried barley, something like that, works really well and I actually throw in a little pack of silica gel. You get these when you purchase shoes and packaged goods and that sort of thing. You often find these in there. They just um, keep moisture away. So I tend to keep them, put them aside and then I can throw them in, in with that little frog with that rice and it will keep it all dry. Please remember that this little frog is not for babies um, but it's great for children's rooms, or older children um, who can have it sitting on their bed and so on. So if you have those that's a good idea to throw a pack of those in if you're using the rice. So our next step we're going to sew our top centre seam and that will be right sides together and it's this centre seam here. And we're going to sew that one on the machine. You can just clip it if you like, pin it, or just pop it together. And we're just going to stitch 
make sure that your edges are really matched up because we're not turning it through. Really make sure that your little points are together. And we're just gonna sew a little four millimeter seam right the way down the back, the back of the spine there. There we have our little frog top seam sewn. You can see that I've gone ahead and I have just taken my pinking shears and notched that top, just the top edge. I've left the two ends here so that we can press them out nice and flat. If you don't have pinking shears, perhaps just use your little scissors and notch that edge. That way we get a nice, lovely curved seam along that top line there. And you can see I have just pressed those two little seams nice and flat and open. So the next step is to add our eyes and we will do this whether you're using buttons or safety eyes. We have our little circles and I've just marked the very centre of those and I can put my little just big enough to make pass my little shank through. Make sure when you're using safety eyes that you push all of that fabric right right down to the base of the eye and then we're going to just pop them in. Remember to make transfer your markings from your pattern pieces. You should have your little eye spots and you should have your little marks at the side here. You can probably hardly see them there um, for sewing in your little mouth. So we're just going to add our little shank through that hole. And that's why it's also very important to keep your ends meeting up nicely when you sew that top seam so that your eye position is correct. We're going to just add our little backing. I like to put something underneath it just to preserve that eye. And it's just a matter of clamping that one down. I usually find that a cotton reel does the job quite well. And then our little eye is nice and secure and you can see that little black showing around the edge and you can, you can choose any colour, something that really makes that little eye pop. So I'm just going to add that second eye and now that my little froggy's eyes are in we're going to sew our bottom onto our, our little frog and the way that we do that we have our piece already made up and we're actually going to put wrong sides together and we're just going to stretch him out nice and flat so we're going to have little flat frog and because we've pressed those two little seams out there front and back we're going to be able to pin him into place very very securely to that bottom piece and we really want those two points anchored in nice and flat and even right through that center seam if you can, fair bit of bulk. Just so that our little frog is sitting perfectly even there. Now you can see that the rest of that little frog is going to sit nice and flat and you can go around and can pin him just on his feet we're just going to pin him all the way around. So he's sitting flat on there. Remember, we're not turning him through. And then we're going to take him to the machine and we're going to stitch him with the same four millimeter seam allowance in a thread that is, works well with your little design because it's going to be seen. And we're going to start at our little point that we have marked on our pattern and we're going to sew all the way. I'm going to sew this little flat frog onto this little fabric base. I'm going to sew right the way around the entire edge of that little frog. Right round. Make sure that you go back and forth over these two seams here. Sorry, we're not going to sew on that part. On, on this little seam here, back and forth, right the way around until we get to the other side of the smile. So this part of the little frog we're not stitching because we're going to leave that for the opening to fill him and we'll be sewing that with our little red embroidery thread. So from that point right the way around to that point with your same four millimeter seam allowance. I now have my little flat frog all stitched into place and it is just a simple matter of going around and we're going to trim off that underside fabric right the way around. 
just being sure to keep the seam allowance the same as it is on the other sides. Take your time and we go right the way around that little frog and you will notice here that I've kept my top pin in that keeps that little nose section down and as you're trimming around you also trim around right on that same edge there that will create your little mouth line. My little frog is all cut out there you can see and now and the next step is to add our little flippers stitching and you can see there that, that I've done three of those little little flipper feet and I'm just going to be doing this one now I just do that on the machine and you can see there you may be able to see that it's very pattern print that I've just marked in two lines that just come up to just the little wrist section here just as far as you like and it's really just to sewing from the centre here down to the edge of the foot and back again and same with the other one so two rows of stitching that just marks out a nice defined little flipper there you can see and you can use a contrasting thread if you like so it's even more visible so I'm just going to go and finish off that final little foot so all my little flippers are sewn now my next step is I'm going to remove that front pin there and while we have our whole little mouth open here I'm just going to add a little bit of filling to just four areas because he's going to be filled with his rice or his beans whatever you're using but I'm only going to fill out just right here his little ankle section here and his two little wrist sections a couple of tiny pieces just to fill those out because the the rice or your pellets won't travel all the way down to those sections but we still want them to be nicely filled out so I'm going to use my forceps here and I can go in through his mouth and find my way all the way down to that little ankle section and you'll see that the your little flipper stitching stops that stuffing from going all the right the way down so we keep a nice flat little flipper there so it's just a matter of adding a few little pieces and you'll find that because we have that inside of that little frog is felt it'll hold on to that that stuffing quite well and it will keep it there in place so I'm just going to do both of those ankles and just that little wrist section there. So I have my little wrists and ankles nicely filled now and we can go ahead and start to sew up our little mouth. Now if you want to add some little nostrils like I have on this one, because this was quite a plain fabric, I've just added two little stitches there using just my black pearl thread. You can use embroidery thread two little stitches either side you can see the placement of those I've put them in on this one because he's quite a plain fabric and they'll be quite visible however this is quite a busy print and I feel that those little nostrils will probably get lost in the print there and maybe make it just look a little bit messy so I'm not going to add nostrils here he's certainly just as handsome without them so what I'm going to do is start to close our little mouth opening. Now we're only going to close it just over halfway and the reason for that is it's much easier to add our little rice or our filling if the opening is slightly smaller and then it's not coming back out at us. So I have my needle threaded with my, my red pearl thread and I just have a knot at the end and we're going to start to sew. Move that little flipper out of the way and we start to sew this mouth. I'm going to start right down here where our stitching finished. I'm going to take our needle, dive in through the layer of felt and come out between those two. Just to start our blanket stitch. Now I do have a video that shows you how to sew the blanket stitch if you would like to see it in more detail but we'll just do a few stitches here now. Now you see that knot has held that one nice and firm and I'm going to go through both layers the same depth. A little stitch is probably about three millimeters across and three millimeters deep to keep a nice tight defined little mouth line in there. So there's my first one. I like to hold that over my finger then I'm going to add my second stitch and your blanket stitch your thread comes out your needle and thread comes out 
through that loop each time and it's that little loop that gives us that nice little binding edge. So I'm just going to make my way around that, that little mouth line, keeping my stitches nice and firm and even and making sure that you're going through both sides of the fabric at the same depth and make sure you're rotating your work as you go so your stitches keep going out nice and straight right the way around. So you can see there that that little stitch is going to line out that mouth really beautifully. So I'm going to continue with that stitch right round till just past that little nose line. So probably about a centimetre and a half past that little nose line and then we're going to leave our needle on. So my stitching is done and I've left my needle and thread on and I have made myself a little cardboard funnel. It's going to help me add my rice through that little section there. And so this is the section left open on my little frog's mouth and I can just pop that one open and I'll stick my little funnel in there and then it's just a matter of adding my rice letting that all slip through and filling that little frog as you add each little portion of rice you just want to work that rice right down into his little leg sections shaping it down working it in and you'll find that he'll fill up all the way down to here and we want to fill him up right up as far as we can without it all coming back out at us and then we're just going to finish off with a little bit of polyester filling. So there I've added as much rice as I can pack in there. You can see quite full, near, almost to the top there. We've still got some room to be able to settle that rice into those little shoulders there. But for now we want this little top line to be nicely pushed out and so we just add a final little bit of polyester filling into the side there which will just plump out that little front section of his mouth and the top of his head and it also stops all that rice coming out at us when we're just closing that final opening. So just add as much as you feel you need just to fill out that front section because you want that little top line be sitting nicely curved and once it's all in there you can adjust it afterwards your rice can certainly be moved around it just gives that little front nose section that nice little plumped out look that we have here so now I can continue because I still have my needle on I can continue on and keep going with my blanket stitch to meet up right up to the other side there to finish him off. So there we have his little mouth line all sewn in. You see that's closed up that little opening perfectly. It's also given him a lovely little mouth line. You can see the little underside contrast there is really lovely. And you've got your little bean filled or rice filled little frog, I'm pretty sure. I've got a couple of grandchildren who are going to take these as soon as they see them, pop them on their beds. What a lovely little present for someone special in your life. I hope you've enjoyed making them. Well, thank you for joining me today and sewing with me today. He really was the perfect little project for a rainy day, wasn't he? If you have enjoyed this video, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beautiful. In the meantime, make sure that you subscribe because you just really never know what's going to come up next. I'm sure I'll surprise you. So, most of all everybody, remember if something good comes your way, remember to pay it forward. Until next time from me, it's Huru.